Okay, if you haven't done so already, go and check out my last video. It was an interview with Pete Cowan and Travis Fulton, and Pete's just dropped a couple of bombs there that have really, really clicked, clicked with me, uh, opened up another area of my brain on this golf swing thing. Um, so I just want to show it you on Gears 3D and explain what he's actually talking about and how this move actually works properly because I believe it's just been taught in the complete wrong and opposite way around, which hopefully I can show you the right way to do it. So for many years now, there's been a hell of a lot of focus on the ground, the feet, you know, even under the ground, we've got people looking below the ground to see what's going on. Um, and it's all been very lower body focused, you know, with the assumption that it's really the lower body that's creating the power and that's what, how you swing the golf club using the lower body. But if you look on YouTube and look up a guy called Tommy McAuliffe, he's actually a golfer who's got no arms, he's got no left arm, he's got no right arm, and he can hit a golf ball. I hold the club in this position, that is, between my neck, shoulder, and face. And on my drives, I get 150 yards. Straight down the fairway. He has marvelous control, better than the average golf. Look at that shot, right for the pin. It shows uncanny skill. Uh, I hope uh, uh, my demonstration uh, will teach the golfers at large that left, uh, stiff left wrist and left arm are not essential to a good game of golf. And we can clearly see, you know, common sense just says and shows that he's actually using his shoulders, he's using his upper body to swing that golf club, okay, which I believe we completely forgot about. You know, everything's being focused down here, what's going on, ground reaction forces. Well, this is where the swing is up here. Okay, we need to focus more on this part. This is what creates the force the ground reaction forces that Pete's describing in the videos. Everybody talks about ground force reaction, but when you look at the spiral, it creates the proper ground force reaction. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that, if you simplify it to the extreme, when we're doing it, if we simplified it, we would create a big spring in our hand. This is a, too much of a simplification, Travis, but let's say we've got a big spring in our hand and I hold the bottom and twist the top, right? I'm creating coil all the way through that spring mm -hmm. and the center's not moving. Yeah? Yep. And then yep. just before you finish coiling the top, what you do is compress the top down. So you compress the coils, which then forces the ground force reaction of the lower part of the coils, which twists it the other way. And then they align and then they open up together. And he explains it very much like a, a spring. What we're trying to do is hold the bottom of the spring here, and then we coil it up from the top. And as we're coiling that spring up, um, it creates stability, stability through the center of the spring. And then what we do before we transition down is we actually push downwards to compress that spring. So this, I've just drawn this in to give you a bit of a picture in your head, but we're actually pushing downwards to compress the spring and it causes the spring to un uncore from the ground, um, which is the ground reaction forces that Pete's talking about. But they could tell you what was happening in the golf swing, but they couldn't really tell you how it was happening. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You did... know, what, what is actually, so some, right. I always say something's got to move something else. So which sequence is it and how is it moved and why is it moving and what is moving it? So what's moving what? So like people talk about the ground force reaction, yeah, but how do I get ground force reaction? Yeah. How do I get it? How do yep. I get it correctly? Right, right. Not just shift weight to get ground force reaction. How do I get it correctly so that the actual body can work in its most efficient way through the impact? Because if the body stalls through impact, the arms and the club will work independently of that. Um, so that's basically the the basics of it. You know, how do we how do we start down? Do we do we focus on you know what the left foot's doing, the left knee, the left hip? I really don't think we should be doing that because I've been trying to do that for a long time since I was told to do it. And in fact, my hip rotation has probably been the worst it's ever been because of that. 
So I know for a fact when I do swing, I do get a feeling when I'm hitting the ball better and clearing better that I'm actually pushing downwards um, before I transition. I'm pushing downwards as I'm going into my backswing. I'm pushing down as I'm transitioning. And that's creating the, the on-calling effect that Pete's talking about in the video. In an ideal world, you're at the start of the downswing, you're, you would have compressional change in the head position, which mm. would actually force the tailbone to go backwards down the spine and out the way almost. That's what ground force reaction is really. You want to create that room. And if you look back at Tiger's swing in 2000, and there's mm -hmm. some great video of him, everybody used to say, well, Tiger's losing height, but it was compressional height. He was compressing his spine back into his tailbone, so he was losing height, but he was creating more room for his arms to come under his chest. So what Pete talks about is in an ideal world, we have compression from the head. Now, we all knew how Tiger got slated for that, that head dropping, you know, when he was playing the best golf that we've seen for a long, long time. And it was an important move to have in his golf swing. So we're just going to talk about why that is now because it really helps um, prevent your hips from thrusting forward. And if your hips thrust forward, it's also known as early extension, then your body rotation will stall. You'll find it very difficult to to turn out the way of the golf ball, and that's probably the biggest problem in golf out there right now. So let's just talk about this head compression. So you'll see as I run it through, if you watch the head of this player, this is a tour average player. This is a taken from gears, hundreds of tour players put into the system, and they've come out with like an average model um, of all of those players. So it's a really good model to use for. For this video so if you look as we're going to the backswing you're going to see the compression from the head Pete's describing is that lowering of the head as you can see there so you can see as this player gets to the top of the swing how the head is lowered from from here down to here so quite a bit we can see the spine angle as well has actually tilted closer to the ground it's moved even closer to the floor the hips have moved down, this is the center of the pelvis here, um, so it's moved downwards and it's also moved backwards as well. So that's really important because we need the, the, the pelvis to actually be moving back and down, so that's going to create plenty of space for us to bring the hands, arms, and club down to delivery here, and then we can get the hands and arms back under the body center and we can maintain good rotation as we're going through by doing that because if the hips thrust forward, that's when your rotation is going to stall. So now we're going to look at thrust. So the center of your pelvis, which is here, this is indicated by the small circle inside the, the bigger red circle. The problem for most golfers is that part of the body tends to move in this direction towards the ball. And if, it, if you thrust your hips forward this way towards the golf ball, then you stall your hip rotation, which is a massive problem. We see a, a big difference with tall players because we actually see their, their pelvis would actually go backwards a little bit and it goes down. And that's really important. That's really what we've got to try and work on. Also the head as well, that goes down. So it's like a compression from the head, from the top down. So... Uh, the pressure going down from the head down the spine will push the tail tailbone back and, and, and the hips downwards and that's how you create the ground reaction force to, to unwind your body correctly in the golf swing. That's how you do it. If you're actually trying to focus on one, unwinding from the ground up, like a lot of you are, whether that's doing something with your left knee, left hip in transition, then it will actually cause your hips to thrust forwards towards the ball and that's why you're really struggling getting out of the way on the downswing. So if we run through this swing now, um, as the head compresses downwards, down the spine, that's going to push the hips downwards and also backwards as well. So it's pushing everything out of the way this way and that's what we need to be doing in the golf swing. So just watch the head as we start going into the takeaway coming down, compressing down straight away. 
you can see the small circle inside the large circle has lowered from its original position so you can see where it is there in the center and we can watch how it goes backwards a little bit and then it goes downwards keeps going down but look how much the head's going down as well so that this downward pressure from the head pushing down is, is pushing the pelvis down towards the ground and backwards so we can see it just hasn't come forward one bit it stayed back this is the figure here this is away from the target in this direction and then in transition coming down pelvis lowers a little bit more I mean look how much that head's come down now that's quite a lot isn't it and you know that's what Tiger was criticized for when he was playing some of the best golf in the world so if we keep going pelvis is now moving up back up a little bit but it's staying back look how it's remaining further back where that small circle is in relation to the center of the big circle so it's moved down it's moved back out of the way that helps you get the club hands arms and club down to delivery now there's plenty of space here so you can get the hands and arms underneath back underneath the body center stabilize that club face and then bring everything through together from there so it's pretty cool to see it on gears because it's you know so accurate so much better than you know just looking at it on a drawing a few lines on a picture or a video we can really see what's going on and you know it's it's been good to find some repeat count stuff and really decode it because i know it's sometimes uh, difficult to understand but you know that's really what he's talking about in in the downswing and and how to do it really so hope that makes sense please comment on the on the video um you know maybe talk about how you're trying to transition and whether this is any different from the way you're trying to do it uh, it's definitely worth going out and giving it a try um obviously i'll be expanding on this a little bit more over the next few videos thanks for watching